In a previous video, we walked through an algorithm for finding the matrices u, sigma, and v used for a singular de value decomposition. In this video, we'll go through some of the theory behind it to explain how we know that the u and v that we found are orthogonal matrices and how we know that when we multiply these three matrices together, we actually get back to A. Here are the steps we used to find the singular value decomposition for a tall matrix A. By tall, I just mean that the number of rows is greater than or equal to the number of columns. First, we found the eigenvalues for the product A transpose times A, and we took their square roots to get our singular values, sigma sub i. We put those sigma sub i's down the diagonal of an m by n matrix to get our matrix sigma. Next, we found length one eigenvectors for A transpose times A and used them as our columns for the matrix V. The simplest situation is when A transpose A has all distinct eigenvalues, so we can just take one eigenvector for each eigenvalue. It's a little more complicated if A transpose A has repeated eigenvalues, and I didn't go into those details. Finally, we computed the first few columns of the matrix U by taking A times V sub I over sigma sub I for the non-zero singular values, sigma sub I. And we got the rest of the columns for U by choosing linearly independent vectors, using Gram-Schmidt to orthogonalize them and dividing by their lengths to make them length one. It's clear from the construction that we get a diagonal matrix for sigma. But here are the other details we need to check to make sure we have a legitimate singular value decomposition for A. First, we need to check that when we do this process and then multiply u times sigma times v transpose, we actually do get the matrix A back. And then we also have to check that v and u are honest to goodness orthogonal matrices. In addition, it's interesting to note that the non-zero eigenvalues for A transpose times A end up also being the non-zero eigenvalues for A, A transpose. And it's interesting that the vectors we use for the first few columns of U, these vectors of the form A times V sub I over sigma sub I, are actually eigenvectors for A, A transpose. So we'll also look at why these two facts are true. These facts show that even though we build our matrices u, sigma, and v in sort of an asymmetric way, focusing on a transpose a instead of a, a transpose and using eigenvectors to get v but doing something entirely different for u, even though we use an asymmetric method, we, there is in fact a symmetry to how u is formed, v is formed, and the choice of doing a transpose A instead of AA transpose. I'm going to start by showing these two matrices are orthogonal. Then I'll show that A is the product we think it should be. And then I'll show these additional facts. I'm not going to say very much about why V is an orthogonal matrix. Recall that the columns of V are eigenvectors for A transpose A, rescaled as needed to be length one. But it's a fact from a video about symmetric matrices that the eigenvectors for distinct eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix are orthogonal. Since A transpose A is a symmetric matrix, at least in the case when it has distinct eigenvalues, we're going to get orthogonal eigenvectors, and so rescaling them will mean they're orthonormal, and our matrix will be an orthogonal matrix. It turns out that when A transpose A doesn't have distinct eigenvalues, it's still possible to choose eigenvectors in such a way that they're orthogonal to each other. And so rescaling them will still give us an orthonormal 
collection of vectors to make an orthogonal matrix V. Next, let's convince ourselves that U is an orthogonal matrix. The first few columns of U are of the form A times VI over sigma I, where VI is one of the column vectors of V. So if we take two of these column vectors, two different ones, say AVI over sigma I and AVJ over sigma J, and we want to check if these are orthogonal, we're going to take the drop product. Well, that's the same thing as taking the first vector, transposing it, and doing matrix multiplication with the second vector. I can pull these scalars out, and now I have AVI transpose matrix multiplied by AVJ. Using transpose rules, this is the same as this expression. Since when we take the transpose of a product, it's the product of the transposes in the opposite order. Now VJ, remember, is an eigenvector for A transpose A. So when I multiply A transpose A times VJ, I'm just going to get lambda J times VJ. Let me pull out the lambda J. But VI transpose times VJ is the same thing as doing the dot product of VI and VJ. And if I and J are different, then this is just zero because my matrix V we already showed was orthogonal. So the dot product of distinct columns of U in those first few columns of this form are all going to be orthogonal. And furthermore, if I take something of the form A V I over sigma I and dot it with itself, then this exact same computation is going to get me down to lambda I over sigma I sigma I V I dot V I. Since sigma I is the square root of lambda I, this quotient of scalars is just equal to one. And since the matrix V is an orthogonal matrix, this dot product is equal to one. So this whole expression evaluates to one. Therefore, the initial columns of the matrix U, the ones of this form, form an orthonormal set. But when we added on some more columns to U to complete it to an M by M matrix, we did so in a way to ensure those last columns would be orthogonal to each other and to the first columns because we used the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process. And we also made sure they were length one by dividing by their lengths if needed. Therefore, all of the columns of U are an orthonormal set and U is an orthogonal matrix. So now let's show that A really is equal to U times sigma times V transpose. Since V is an orthogonal matrix, V transpose is the same thing as V inverse. So we need to show that A is equal to U sigma V inverse, or equivalently, that A times V is equal to U times sigma. Well, when we multiply two matrices together, that's the same thing as multiplying the first matrix by each column of the second matrix and then just concatenating those columns together. I'll write this down. And when we multiply a matrix by a diagonal matrix on the right, that's the same thing as multiplying each column of the first matrix by the corresponding diagonal entry. I'll write this down. Notice that if U is an M by M matrix and sigma is an M by N matrix with M bigger than N, then the last few columns of U, they don't even appear in this expression. They're completely irrelevant because all the entries in those last few columns just get multiplied by the zeros down at the bottom of sigma. So this is what we're trying to show. In other words, we need to show that A times VI is equal to sigma I times UI for I between 1 and N. For sigma i not equal to zero, we know that ui is defined as a times vi over sigma i. So sigma i ui is going to be sigma i a vi over sigma i. 
canceling out the sigma i's, we get the equality that we're looking for. And if sigma i is equal to zero, then sigma i u i is just zero. But lambda i, which is sigma i squared, is also zero. So a v i is also going to be zero times v i, which is the zero vector also. So we have the equality of matrices that we need to prove that a is equal to u times sigma times v transpose. Next, let's show that the non-zero eigenvalues for a transpose a are also the non-zero eigenvalues for a a transpose. Suppose that lambda sub i is a non-zero eigenvalue for a transpose a. In other words, there is a non-zero vector, say xi, such that a transpose a times xi is equal to lambda i times xi. Let's multiply both sides of this equation on the left by the matrix A. That gives us A, A transpose, A, Xi equals A, lambda I, Xi. If I pull out the lambda I on the right side and give the vector A, Xi a name, say Y, I, then I have the equation A, A transpose, Y, I is equal to lambda i y i. Note that y i is not the zero vector because if it were, then a transpose times y i, in other words, a transpose a x i would be a zero vector, which would mean that lambda i would actually be a zero eigenvalue. Therefore, we know that y i is an eigenvector for a a transpose with eigenvalue lambda i. So lambda i is a non-zero eigenvalue for a a transpose. Conversely, if mu i is a non-zero eigenvalue for a a transpose, i.e. a a transpose times some say z i is equal to mu i times z i, then the same kind of argument multiplying both sides on the left by a transpose will show that mu i is a non-zero eigenvalue for a transpose a. So the non-zero eigenvalues for these two matrices, a transpose a and a a transpose, are exactly the same. And when we're doing the singular value decomposition, even though we build the matrix sigma in terms of the eigenvalues for a transpose a, we could just as well have built them in terms of the eigenvalues for a, a transpose. Finally, I want to show that the vectors we use for the first few columns of u, the vectors of the form a times vi over sigma i, where the vi are the eigenvectors for a transpose a, the columns of the v matrix, and the sigma i are the singular values, the non-zero singular values. I want to show that these first few columns of u are actually eigenvectors for a, a transpose. This shows that u and v have a lot more in common than we might first have realized. They're both built out of eigenvectors. So to prove this, let's take a a transpose and multiply it by a v sub i over sigma i. I'll pull out the 1 over sigma i. And now since v sub i is an eigenvector for a transpose a, with eigenvalue lambda i, I can rewrite this as 1 over sigma i times a times lambda i v sub i. Now let me pull out the scalar lambda sub i and rewrite things a little bit. 
And we see that this vector, a v sub i over sigma i, when we multiply a a transpose by it, we just get the same thing as lambda sub i times it. Also, this vector a v i over sigma i is not equal to the zero vector because if we multiply a transpose a v sub i over sigma i, then that gives us lambda i v sub i over sigma i, which is not zero because we're assuming sigma i and therefore lambda i are not zero. Therefore, a v sub i over sigma i is an eigenvector for a a transpose with eigenvalue lambda sub i. This video squared away a lot of the details about singular value decompositions. The matrices u and v that we built really are orthogonal. When we multiply u times sigma times v transpose, we really do get back a. In addition, u and v are not so different from each other. v is built with eigenvectors for a transpose a, and u is built with eigenvectors from a a transpose. The non-zero eigenvalues for a a transpose and a transpose a are the same, so either one can be used to build the diagonal matrix sigma after taking square roots.